Hey, Craig Dosti here with Dosti's View. We're uh, still in the Bat Cave. I'm doing two episodes at a time here because uh, life is busy right now, so I can't always pull this off midweek. Uh, and we're back at the Bat Cave, and I wanted to talk about our favorite subject <laughs> boots. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of anticipation, maybe even some anxiety uh, about uh, what's going on with Telemark Boots. Um, Scott has ceased production of most of their boots, and I'm pretty confident that the voodoo is going to go away uh, as soon as they finish selling off whatever inventory they have left. But um, Scott will deny that. It's okay. Uh, Crispy makes some great boots, but um, it's a small part of the Crispy business. And uh, Telemark for Scarpa, while it actually was um, what put them on the map when they pioneered the first plastic Telemark boot, it's now, it is not their, you know, number one priority anymore. And um, a big part of that is economics. And so I wanted to talk about uh, the tele community's expectations. And we're hoping for some new uh, boots with additional capabilities. And we're dependent upon Scarpa because Scarpa is the only brand who actually has a history of commitment to Telemark. But we have to be aware of a couple of things. Telemark, um, between 95 and 2005, was growing. It was burgeoning. The market was huge. And um, the, the more boots that were produced, the more people bought them. But we're past that, okay? And the, the reality is, economically... Um, very few businesses know how to survive and thrive with a flat market. Um, there's just historically in our, my lifetime, your lifetime, anyone who's watching this, if you're alive, the um, specter of inflation, which shows up in many different ways, in many different categories, continually chips away at, a, at the profit of a business that's appealing to a flat-sized market. In a flat market, the only way you can maintain economic viability is you have to grow market share at the expense of your competitors. But at a certain point, if you eliminate your competitors, your competitors get out of business, then you're left with the whole pie. And if the cost of goods keeps rising, but the market size doesn't keep rising faster than that, then the profit line is gonna get squeezed because the consumers are only gonna be willing to pay so much and the vendors are only willing to uh, um, cut the deals, cut the rate so much, so there's only so much money available left to keep things viable. And so that's one of the things that we're up against. It's, it's outside of the realm of skiing. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a universal cultural uh, problem, okay? But there's another one. Let's say Scarpa um, believes that they can overcome that with a revolutionary design that at least... Um, for a while, say a 10 year span, um, there's gonna be renewed sales of the equipment. Awesome, awesome. So then there's one other thing that you need to consider and I think a lot of people forget about this. Even when Scarpa first introduced uh, the Terminator and their subsequent, um, well, NTN was the next major change. Every time there was a major shift in the technology offered in Telemark Boots, first with the Terminator, they had to scramble for a couple of versions before, in my opinion, they hit the sweet spot of what the design was like. Like the, the first 
plastic telemark boot from um, Garmont was an utter failure, the Estremo. Um, it had uh, too soft of a flex and the way the bellows was designed, you ended up pinching your toes and I considered them to be little guillotines on my toes. Yeah. If I'd skied it for any length of time, I would have lost my toes, right? Um, Crispy had that problem with their early bellows. People experienced toe crunch. And so they finally modified the bellows and actually they have a great design to their bellows now. It's the most progressive flexing bellows in a Telemark boot. Um, so Scarpa had to make some changes before they hit the sweet spot with their first 75 millimeter plastic Telemark boot. Well, and, and then the same thing happened with NTN. The first NTN boot, the TX, um, was probably too stiff initially. So they had to make some modifications for that. So what I'm saying is, assuming Scarpa is willing to go forward economically and they see that there is value in producing this Telemark boot that um, I know they want to produce, okay? I do know that they're, um, they're headed into some new terrain. They're trying some new ideas. And um, when they come out with it, and it's not gonna be fall 23, at the earliest it's gonna be fall 24, but even if it isn't, even if it is fall 24, okay, you may not want to be among the first people to get on it because like the first Terminator, like the first TX, like the first crispy plastic Telemark boot, like the first Garmont plastic Telemark boot, um, when you go into new terrain, there's some unknowns that you're just gonna not, you're not gonna find out about them until you get a sample size in the thousands. Okay, right now they're, they've got a small group of people who are their testers and they can get some good feedback on that, but they can only get the feedback from maybe 20 people. But when you increase that sample size to a hundred or a thousand, things will show up that you missed. And so you might not want to be the first, one of the first 500 buyers. On the other hand, you might want to be. I don't, you know, it's all speculation at this point. But my, I guess my main point here is to, if you love Telemark and you're feeling like you need to get a new Telemark boot, but you don't want to miss the new one that's coming, I would say there's no hurry. And so get what you need now. And if you miss the first wave of what's new, you might actually be thankful, okay? Um, and so that's not to discourage anybody. Um, hopefully it encourages my friends at Scarpa to um, bring it out. Let's get it going and let's get to the second version so we can rock and roll drop a knee, and really spread telemark.